Bang! We're rolling and we're live. All right, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> welcome <laughs> to Mr. Yaba Chaba's MMA show with yours truly, Monsieur Yaba de Chaba. Now, a lot of people might ask, or a lot of people do ask, this name, Mr. Yaba Chaba, where does it come from? What the hell is it? I even have water right here. In the All over the place. This one's colder. Where does it come from? What is it? What does it mean? Right? And to be honest with you, it really stems from me, I would say, way back in the day, because, uh, you know, I've been playing games my whole life. Way back in the day, like Halo 3, you know, Call of Duty 4, um, Modern Warfare 2 even, where, you know, I was like like maybe 11, 12, I don't know how old I was. Like, yeah, like 11, 12 around there. And, you know, I'm really into the game. I'm trying to win because I'm, I'm very competitive, you know, whatever. And when I would die, I would just yell out random shit. I would just be like... Like just whatever, right? Or whatever. And for some reason, I just kept yelling out, whatever. And uh, it usually happens when, like, like you have little health, and then your enemy has a little bit of health, and you're just about to kill it, and then they get you. And you're like, oh, fucking whatever, right? So I just used to yell out just, just nonsense, just whatever. And Yaba, for some reason, just came out of my mouth. And and then uh, then just you know yaba chaba I don't know it just kind of <laughs> it just kind of just was just born right and uh, now I am Mr Yaba Chaba and I think it's unique you know I'm the only YouTube fucking channel that has that name right I don't think anybody else does and I actually looked up what yaba means and apparently yaba in like some sort of Asian countries. Yaba means like meth or some shit. Like it's a meth drug. Yaba. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'll tell you what. This show has the energy of, uh, of meth heads. No, I'm just kidding. But, nah, so that's where it came from. And uh, I think it's pretty cool and unique. And it's just goofy at the end of the day. And that's what I intend on doing, just being goofy having fun, entertaining, talking about what I love, my, you know, the sport that I love the most, MMA, MMA, and, uh, yeah, just thought I had to tell you guys that, because I didn't say it in any other videos yet, so, you know, hey, there you go, bada bing, bada boom, um, so I uploaded the reaction video to the pay-per-view, it was super cool, it was awesome, and now, we keep on rolling, Right, and I think the commentator said that we're gonna keep on, we're gonna have like eight straight events or something like that, or I don't know. We're just gonna keep going. This is gonna be great. It's awesome. I love it. So we got the fight night coming up this Saturday, this Sabado. Cannoneer versus Vettori, Marvin Vettori. And uh, I just love doing accents, as you can tell. Uh, my favorite Italian one, or it's not even a, a, Italian. I think it's like, uh, I think it's Argent, Argentinian. This guy, his name is, uh, um, oh my God, what's the guy's name? His, his middle name is Beppi. Beppi. Uh, oh, Loriano Starapoli. Beppi. Beppi. Loriano Beppi Starapoli. I don't know why that name just sticks with me, but I love that fucking name. Like, it's just, just, it just rolls off the tongue. It's just a fun name to say. Loriano Beppi Starapoli. And then you got Marvin Vettori. Right, which doesn't roll off the tongue as well. But the Loriano Starapoli. When's that guy fighting? When's, he's like my fucking favorite fighter. I know this guy. And then another great name is, uh, Ignacio Bahamandes. Like, that guy, that guy's fire, right? Ignacio kind of means, like, ignite, I think. I don't fucking know. Sounds similar to ignite. And he's fire. So, can't wait to see that guy fight. He's, a, he's interesting to watch. But, uh, yeah, you know, um, 
So we got this fight card coming up. And I think it's going to be a pretty decent card. You know? Uh, definitely has a lot of newcomers. Definitely has a lot of prospects. A lot of people that you don't really know about. Um, and obviously the headliner is the headliner for a reason. It's a top five middleweight fight. Uh, middleweight is just such a weird division right now, man. It's like finally we had... Alex Pajera, the new blood, right? He's going to switch it up and da-da-da. And of course, of course, he gets absolutely cream-pied by Adisonia. Which, I, you know, it's funny. I did not really like Adisonia that much. I really didn't like him. Uh, you know, he's just kind of cocky. He's arrogant, you know. He loves anime, but I think he loves it too much. Like, I love anime too, but it's not like my whole personality. Like, people make it their whole fucking personality and it just kind of ruins it for everybody just kind of like come on man you really gotta you know dress up with the ears and the, you know the, the goofy outfits and you gotta you gotta buy a pillow with a naked Japanese woman on it why what are you doing right you know and then you gotta make these cringy videos you know Role playing as your favorite character, and you're, you know, just <laughs> it's just too much. So, you know, and Izzy, Izzy was kind of, you know, a little too much on that end. But, um, you know, as a fighter, I respected him for sure. But as a person, he's kind of, you know, cocky. Like I said, whatever. And man, when he knocked the fuck out of Alex Bahia, which was, you know, Izzy was hurt a little bit, but he definitely knew what he was doing. He baited him, and man, that knockout. I was with the boys, you know, I was with uh, my boy, Willie Walkthroughs, I was with him, Mr. Willie, and the Wizard, aka Joey, you know, I was with them at the at the bar, you know, we are at the bar, and, uh, dude, that fucking knockout, we, I promise you, I couldn't feel anything in my body, I was like levitating for like three seconds, holding Willie like this, we're like, ah, ah. Like, you don't even know what to do. It was just so, like, crazy, just so sudden, right? Um, I think it was the first or second round. I don't remember that. But, yeah, so anyways, Izzy wins the belt again. Alex decides to move up because he's fucking gigantic. I don't even know how he makes 185. I don't even know. Like, this guy, like, for some reason, he's like a funhouse mirror because, you know... He's, like, standing next to Sean Strickland recently, and Sean Strickland looks like a fucking little boy next to him. And then you got him standing next to Tyson Fury. They look like the same height. And then Tyson Fury is supposed to be listed at 6'9". He, Pajeda, is supposed to be listed at 6'4". Like, what is going on, right? Like, this guy is just, I don't know, he's just gigantic. Like, I don't understand it. But anyways, I'm rambling. So, yeah, Izzy's the champ. Kind of, you know, he already beat everybody, so that kind of sucks that there's no fresh blood. But how it pertains to this fight is kind of interesting because it's like, well, you know, Izzy already beat the shit out of Vittori twice. First fight was actually close. I should, I should, you know, take that back. The first fight was actually close. The second fight, not so much. Um, very boring, actually. Um, and then Cannoneer, I mean, you know, Cannoneer could rematch Izzy. But that fight, the Cannoneer fight with Izzy, horrendous. And it wasn't really Cannoneer's fault per se. I mean, he he was trying, but Izzy just decided to be leg kicky, moving, little tip tap, tip tap, jab, run away. And listen, all right, I'm a fan of Izzy now. I'm a fan now. Because after that knockout and he did this, I can't. What am I going to say? That was crazy um and especially him being knocked out from the guy before he's a, he does never even won, a, won against the guy you know what i mean like he's going against his arch nemesis and you know he's got his number like doing all all against the odds to do that was spectacular but you know is he walking out with the urn and the fucking the undertaker hat which by the way don't you ever disrespect the undertaker you understand He's a fucking Hall of Famer, right? So you fucking do the get up with the, the hat, the urn, right? And you're walking out to his music. 
and you deliver that type of performance, that's what made me really upset at him. And, uh, yeah, so if Cannoneer wins this fight, it's like, hmm, you know, you put yourself in Dana's shoes. It's like, how am I really going to sell this fight again? Unless Cannoneer, like, does, like, a triple, quintuple, 360, 720 tailspin fucking leg, you know, you know, head kick and knocks Vittori out clean and makes him do, like, a cartoon fall over or whatever, you know, the, uh, I don't know, I don't know how you would sell that fight again, so, this main event is kind of, um, kind of weird, right, because it's like, you obviously want to win, but at the same time, what does it really do, you know, so, uh, but anywho, we'll get to that main event later, but Foist, I want to get to the Foist fight of the evening, and it's my boy Modestus Bukaki. Bukal Buk- sorry. Bukakis. I'm just trying to be funny. <laughs> Modestus Bukaki. Bukakis. No, I shouldn't, you know. I actually like Bukakis. The reason why, I mean, I'm bringing him up because I like him. But he does have a funny ass last name. I mean, fucking Bukaki, Bukakis. It's just hilarious. If I had the last name Bukakis, <laughs> you better believe all my friends would be calling me Mr. Bukaki. Which I would take in stride, because that's a fire-ass last name. Anyways, uh, yeah, so Modestus, Modestus Bukaukis, his last fight was against uh, Tyson Pedro, Pedro, and uh, he, he, he took that fight on short notice, and Tyson Pedro, what for Pedro, uh, he, you know... I believe he had the full camp, right? And um, Modestus Bukalkis was kind of like the last minute replacement type of guy. I think he took the, the, the fight on like short notice, like maybe one week or two weeks notice. And Tyson Pedro, like I remember he had like a good first round, but completely lost steam, which is like, how's, how do you lose steam when you have a full fucking training camp after just five minutes, right? Like that's just weird. But really why I bring this up is because Mr. Bukalkis, like, came in on short notice and put on a clinic with the jab. His movement was looking real good. He looks completely brand new. And what was, you know, what I respect about him so much is that he dealt with that knee injury against Khalil Roundtree. I don't know if you guys remember that. But, you know, Khalil did the dirtiest move in MMA. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, you could kick somebody in the head. Are you going to complain about a kneecap? Uh, the, the head kick is uh, dangerous. Okay. Yeah, you can get knocked out by a head kick. Sure. It's a lot of force and whatever. Okay, fine. But guess what? You get knocked out, you get wobbled, TKO'd, whatever, and you're going to be back in a few months, right? You let your brain clear up, whatever. You, you don't train, you don't spar for a while. You're back in a few months. Blowing out your fucking knee, hyperextending that shit, the way that is being done right now, you're out for years, right? Like, year, two years, depending on how severe it is. Like, that's fucking no joke. And I think it's bullshit at the end of the day. I understand it's MMA and, you know, you got to use whatever you can to fucking win and you just want to win no matter what. But I think that's kind of bullshit, right? Like... I would much rather have the stupid 12 to 6 elbows legal, which, I mean, doesn't, like, this doesn't do nothing. You know? <laughs> this shit doesn't fucking do nothing, right? It's the same as this or this. But the, uh, the hyper extended kneecap fucking leg knee stomp thing, take that shit out. And knee to the grounded opponent should be legal. The whole palm to the floor, you know, hand up, hand on. I think it's just stupid. A lot of people play that game. And, uh, you know, even Aljo knows how to play that game. And he's, he's, he literally, literally used that recently against Henry. And he used that against Piotr Jan. And, um, yeah, you know, so I just don't like that people can kind of play that game and whatever. So I just kind of wish that was just eradicated. And, uh... Definitely take the hyper 
knee extension out. So for Bukakis to come back from all that, come in on short notice, fight that Tyson, uh, who's, you know, like a, a up-and-comer prospect, whatever, and look really good with the feints, like I said, the boxing. I'm really excited to see what this guy can do because I, I would like to think that I have an eye for, for certain things, and um, I really do believe that, you know, I, I see something in this guy for sure. You know, I think his... Is uh, he's he's over he's uh, overall well rounded and he's fighting Zach Pauga, who got knocked out by Usman's brother, which um, you know, yikes, that guy looks scary. I don't know how skilled he is, Usman's brother. I don't know his, I don't know his name. I forgot his name, but uh, you know he's got power. So we'll see. I definitely expect Bukakis to uh, put on a clinic because uh, from what I see, I can. Like this guy, he's you know he's tall, rangy, good good hands, great feints, great movement, good gas tank, um, you know, pretty pretty great grappling, you know, knows how to get to his feet and all that. So you know, I'm excited to see what he can do. So I think I got Bukakis in that one. So uh, let's see what I got next here. Ronnie Lawrence, I, I put this guy down. So he's finding Dan Argetta. And I highlight Ronnie Lawrence because I remember when he fought against in the Contender Series, right? Excuse me one second. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. While I partake in this refreshing beverage. He was on the Contender Series, and Dana White himself was like, this Ronnie Lawrence guy is special. He's this, he's that, whatever, right? And I definitely saw it, too. Like, the way he blended in the grappling, the striking. He looks phenomenal, right? And then he ran into Saeed Yakub Kakremanov. And this Saeed Yakub guy really is fucking insane. His grappling chops, the guy doesn't fucking slow down. And I don't even know why he got released. Like, I was scrolling on IG, and this guy got released. Like, why? What the fuck did he do? Right? Um, so, yeah, Ronnie got beat pretty handedly by Saeed Yakub Kakremonov. Saeed Yakub Kakremonov. Got beat pretty handedly from him. And, um, you know, I felt bad, right? Because uh, I was even telling people at my gym, I was like, yeah, you got to watch this fight. This is the one. It was in the prelims. I'm like, yo, this one, this is going to be fight of the night. Trust me on that. And uh, Ronnie Lawrence, honestly, when I watched that fight with him in it, I realized that uh, there's levels to the grappling. And um, I think, you know, he definitely needs, needs to fill in some holes for sure. So I'm excited to see how he comes back, right? He's fighting this Dan Argetta guy who's uh, who's a young, young guy, younger, I should say. Um, and, you know, I'm really expecting to see Ronnie Lawrence put in that work like I saw him do previously. So uh, I'm definitely, definitely keep an eye on him. And, uh, and I definitely got him. I think he's going he's gonna to come in with a vengeance. Because that fight was a, was a while ago, I think. Um, I think a year ago. Or I would say it was like a year ago for sure. So we'll see how he comes, you know. He's in the right page of 32. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to see what Ronnie Lawrence has to bring. And hopefully I don't look like a buffoon like I did my previous video. So uh, let's see what happens there. We got Jimmy Flick. He's fighting. I can't see. I can't I'm trying to see what I wrote down. Yeah, Jimmy the Flick. Jimmy the Brick Flick is fighting. And... Um, he lost to, uh, it was Charles Johnson. Yeah, there we go. Charles Johnson, the tall, skinny guy. And I just don't understand where that came from with Jimmy with Jimmy Flick. Because I saw him in the Contender Series. I'm like, wow, this guy's grappling is insane, right? And then he did like a flying arm triangle to, uh, was it Cody Durden he did the flying arm triangle? He did a flying arm triangle. He got, like, two submissions in a row, I believe. And then he somehow, like, for some reason wanted to retire, which is kind of weird. But, you know, he said he had family problems, whatever, and respect, right? Came, comes back after he, you know, gets everything together, and then he loses. 
to Charles Johnson in horrible manner. Like, first round TKO. Horrible. Um, and the reason why I even write this guy down is because, like I said, I feel like I have an eye for these things. And I really feel like in the flyweight division, this guy could be a major, major problem. Like, I'm telling you, the way this guy transitions from submission to submission to submission is wrestling uh, is very, very high level. Very high level. His stand-up is uh, a little sussy. You know, a little, a little sussy. But I hope that he's going to fine-tune that. And, you know, he's still young in his career. But uh, for sure, this guy, like, has a lot of potential. A lot. And I remember saying the same thing when I saw Brendan, Brendan Moreno. Right? He was the current champ. I remember him fighting, you know, way back. He fought, like, this uh, short, stocky guy. I can't remember his name. He's kind of like a ginger-looking guy. He had kicked him, you know. I remember when he fought, um, uh, he fought uh, Pantoja. I remember when he fought him, like, the first time, I believe. I remember when he fought, you know, I remember him fighting, him, him fighting way back, right? And I just remember, like, man, this guy's good. He's got great hands, great this, great that, right? So it's going to be very interesting to see if Jimmy the Flick, Jimmy the Brick Flick, can get some momentum, get some wins under his belt, and let's see if he can improve on that striking. And uh, let's see how he how he gets it done. And I believe he's going to get this fight done by submission. So we'll see on that. Good luck to him. Then we got uh, Pat Sabatini versus uh, Lucas. Did I say Lucas? I wrote this on my fucking sticky notes. I have chicken scratch. Lucas Almeida. Yeah. So Pat Sabatini versus Lucas Almeida. And uh, the Lucas Almeida cat knocked out Trezano, which was a back and forth brawl, which was fantastic. Pat Sabatini, on the other hand, is more of a grappler. And his last fight was against Damon Jackson. And, uh, you know, he got fucking cremated, right? Which was really crazy. Like, nobody really expected that. But um, you just never know, right? Two grapplers, you never know what's going to happen. So this is the classic grappler versus striker match, in my opinion. And, um, you know, Pat Sabatini comes from the Philly the Philly gym over there. And, uh, you know, he's got great, 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 great grappling so we'll see in this fight. We will definitely see who's going to win this fight. Um, I don't know. I think I always kind of lean more towards the grapplers, right? But you never know. You know, you really never know, especially with, you know, coming off a knockout. The confidence is kind of, you know, rocky. You're just kind of like, man, last time I did this, I got knocked out, you know. So we'll see how he comes out. Um, I think it's going to be pretty damn good fight and if I had to pick a wiener I would say I'll go with Sabatini by decision I think he's going to grind him out so we'll see how that goes we got Armin Petrosian Petrosian versus uh, CLD Chris Lee Duncan so CLD fought I can't remember who he fought last but kind of ended like super quick with an eye poke I believe or something like that and uh, it was just kind of like a weird way for him to get in, you know, get in the UFC that way. He was a, he's a very highly, uh, highly touted, right? Highly touted prospect. Is that how you say it? I don't fucking know. And, um, yeah, so he's, he's, uh, he's definitely a prospect to look out for. He's 8-0, a lot of knockouts. And this Armin Petrosian guy, he's really good, too. And when he fought Kayo Bohayo, Kayo is really a... a, a phenomenal grappler and uh, Petrosian really definitely held his ground in terms of the takedown defense and the striking but you know Kyle won that fight I think it was a very very close fight but this Petrosian cat he can really strike he has extremely great takedown defense his jiu-jitsu is kind of you know whatever but like I said his takedown defense is really good and that's all that matters as long as it doesn't get to the floor you can strike right so it's gonna be a striking affair and uh, I like to see more of the CLD guy. You know, I don't really know much about him. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how that fight goes out. And, um, you know, if I had to pick, 
I'll give it to Armin because, you know, he's got the UFC experience and this and that. But, hey, you never know. With fights like these, with, like, younger guys, up-and-coming guys, you really just never know because, who knows, this Armin guy could become the next champ. And you just never know, right? But you can kind of guess and be like, hey, this guy's got a lot of potential. But so many times you see people with crazy amount of potential and they go nowhere. Or you see a guy who's pretty good, kind of under the radar. He just keeps winning fights here and there. And next thing you know, it's Max fucking Holloway, who's like one of the best featherweights of all time. Like, this guy was just winning. And, you know, he's gotten some good wins. Oh, yeah, he's pretty good, pretty good. Next thing you know, I remember watching him fight uh, Ricardo. Is it Ricardo Lamas? Yeah, Ricardo Lamas, right? That's, that's his first name, right? Ricardo Lamas. I'm not fucking... I don't got that Joe Biden going on. Ricardo Lamas, right? I'm not going crazy. right? Anyways, I, I just remember uh, watching him fight Ricardo Lamas. And I'm like, man, what? Like, there he goes again. H- how many wins is that in a row? Like, holy shit. This guy's got like eight, nine wins in a row. And he hasn't fought for like the belt yet and shit. Like, what the hell? So that's what I mean. You just never know, right? So this Armin Petrosian and uh, CLD... It's going to be a very exciting, younger, young up-and-coming type of guys, type of fight. And it's definitely going to be a banger. Somebody's going night-night for sure, because these guys like to throw down. So we shall see. Oh, shit. Did not see that guy right there. That's why you always look over your shoulder, my friends. Um, so, look at that. Interstate is always craziness. So, yeah, we'll see who gets that. I got Petrosian by, I'm going to say third-round knockout. I think it's just going to be a war. And I think uh, Petrosian is just going to maybe just use his veteran experience. He's got a great gas tank, too. Like, I remember watching that uh, Kayo fight. He's got a great gas tank. He really does. So, we'll see. I, th- I think a late stoppage because I think the CLD cat is going to come in. He's going to try to knock his head off. It's going to be a war. And then he's just going to gas. So, I don't know. That's my prediction. Who gives it a shite? Saryukin versus Joaquin Silva. Now, here's what's up. Okay. Here's what's up. Who is this fucking manager? Who's the fucking manager for this Silva guy? Who? Like, what? Why are you taking... This fight. Why? This Joaquin Silva is not even like in the top 30 of lightweights. Like, I, I promise you. Like, he's not. Like, before his last win, he's one of three, right? And his last two losses were both by knockout. Hack Perest. And I remember the, the other one. But he's been knocked out twice in a row before his, his uh, last win against, I don't even fucking know the guy's name. And you're going to go up against Armin Saryukian? Armin Saryukian? What? Like, what are you doing? Why would the commission allow this? I'm being dead serious. This Saryukian guy could very well fight for the belt right now. That's how fucking talented that guy is. His striking needs a little bit of work. Because, like, let's say, you know, because he fought Islam, this Armin Saryukin guy. In, like, his first fight in the UFC or some shit, or, like, second fight, I believe. Like, they fought, he fought super early in his career against Islam. And that fight was extremely competitive. Islam did win, but it was a very competitive fight. And I've never seen Islam be that tested in the grappling realm besides Volk. But then, you know you know what I mean? So, this Haryukian guy is fucking no joke. And I just don't understand why Joaquin Silva is fighting him. Did nobody else want to fight Armin Saryukian? You know what I mean? Is it kind of like the, the Islam thing where, you know, people are kind of ragging on Islam. Oh, who did he beat? Who did he beat? Well, nobody wanted to fucking fight the guy. Right? So, it's kind of like the same thing going on here. And Shit, man. And I mean, I know this Joaquin Silva guy, he's got great grappling, whatever, this and that, but, uh, 
in terms of our Arman Sarukian. This Arman Sarukian, yeah. This uh, I think this is going to be a complete and utter destruction. I think it's going to be a round one KO, like TKO, like just ground and pound, just ob- obliteration, complete annihilation. Like fuck, man. Whoever that guy's manager is needs to be fucking fired immediately. Like, I get it's an opportunity. You're going to fight one of the top five lightweights. It's going to be career changing for you. You got this. Yeah. No. No. (laughs) No. So, yeah. Arman Sarukian by uh, first round (laughs) demolition. And uh, I really want. Uh, Sarukian to fight um, fight somebody in the top five right I know he fought Gamrot and that was a fucking crazy fight I think Gamrot did win that fight you know by the slightest because I think his striking was just a little bit better but man this kid is young he's hungry talented grappling is insane he's got power He's got fucking tree trunk thighs. The guy, this guy got it all. And he's going to completely obliterate Joaquin Silva. And I really hope that he says on the mic, I want these fucking chickens. I want top three. I want top five. Give them to me. Give them to me now. Just go crazy on the mic because he deserves it. Like this guy is, uh, is the real deal. So, uh, yeah. Complete obliteration. R.I.P. Silva. Next. It's time for the main event. You got Marvin Vettori versus uh, Jared Kennedy. Um So, yeah, kind of like what I stated earlier about this fight. Nobody really knows what's going to happen. Whoever wins, right? But then again, you never know what happens. Let's say one of them do win in a spectacular fashion or whatever. Robert or Drickus wins and then they beat Izzy somehow or what, you know, whatever. Then, hey, the winner of this fight is up next. So, you really never know, right? You never know in MMA. You never know what could happen. So, when I look at this fight, right? I hate to say this, because I, I like Marvin Vittori. You know, at first he was kind of a hothead. Nobody really liked him. He was always angry and whatever. But then, you know, you kind of, you know, you're, you're warming up to him. And then you realize that he's just really passionate. He's just, he's an Italiano, you know. Italianos are very passionate people, right? And um, so, you know, a lot of people are starting to like him. And I really liked him when he fought Paulo Costa. Because <laughs> that whole fight week was just bizarre but also top tier entertainment comedy and just fucking flat out hilarious like when he did when they both did the interview with uh Brett Okamoto and fucking Paulo Costa was just like you know hey they told me that I you know I can't make this weight and if you don't want to fight that's that sounds like a you problem you know I don't know what's the problem it sounds like you don't want to fight and he's just over here just completely missing weight and just being an asshole. He's just like, mm, looks like it's a you problem. If you want to fight, you're a big pussy. Right? <laughs> and then Marvin's just like, I don't give a shit. I'm going to fight you in whatever fucking weight class. He's like, you know, he's like, you've been drinking that wine recently, bud? You know, so Marvin definitely won me over with that fight. And that fight was a crazy fucking fight, by the way. Paulo Costa looked gigantic. Marvin Vittori always looked like a middleweight in there because he's been dieting for so long. He's usually a bigger middleweight. And, uh, man, you know, Marvin was in the pocket exchanging with Paulo. He Paulo threw some crazy head kicks and big shots, and Marvin ate that shit. That guy's got a fucking cinder block for a fucking head that, Mar- you know, Marvin does. And I just remember, man, he fucking, wow, what a great fight, right? So then he fights Robert Whitaker. And then he obviously loses because Robert Whitaker is just that guy. He's him. I love who doesn't love Robert Whitaker. And Robert just basically showed there's levels to this. And it seemed like in that fight, I remember that uh, Robert was just leading the dance. Marvin really couldn't get any offense going. 
And that's what the great ones do. They they make sure that you're dancing to their tune, right? And really, it goes in any sport. Really, it translates to any sport, that, that golden rule, you know. Uh, basketball, you put that ball in, you know, LeBron's hands or Jordan's hands or, you know, Curry's hands. And you're going to their tempo, how they want to control the action, the flow and all that. Same thing with football. You put that ball in Brady's hands. He's going to control the flow, the tempo, the play calling, like all that stuff, right? Same with fighting, you know. Just like Amanda the other night. She showed that she's the fucking ring general. She's the queen in there. And you're going to fucking dance to her beat. So that's what happened with Marvin in that fight. And um, his re- his most recent fight with uh, Delize, you know, I believe he won. You know, I think he did enough to win. It was a very close fight. But really what just blows my mind about Marvin is this guy is throwing arm punches. And what I mean by arm punches is when you're in your stance, right, and you want to throw a really powerful fucking shot, you know, Rampage said it best, you got to put your ass into it, right? And really what he means by that is you got to use your hips, right? And Marvin really doesn't use his hips when he's throwing any shots, right? Like, I know he dropped Jack Hermanson or whatever, but it just, like these knockdowns or any wobbly shots that he does really is very few and far in between like he really doesn't throw that many crazy knockout blows or wobbling shots right like Janet Jared Kinnear does he does for sure so I really wish that Vittori can can really change that about him because um you know skill set wise I think he has a very well-rounded skill set like I think he has really good striking um he's got great head movement you know He's have, he has pretty decent defense, but he also has a granite chin as well to back up his defense and whatnot. And he's got very great grappling. He's got really good jujitsu, great grappling, great wrestling, all that. Like he's he's you know he's definitely the full package. But like I said, the guy throws arm punches, and the guy really just you know I really wish you'd throw a little bit better combinations, right? And maybe switch stances a little bit more. So you know like. Because when he throws that left hand, he's left. He's a lefty. When he throws that left hand, there's no sting behind it. Like he gets himself in great position, but he doesn't have any sting behind it at all. And you know, I wish he'd mix it up to the body a little bit more. So you know, I'm kind of picking on him a little bit, but I pick, I pick, I'm picking on him because I I like the guy. I think he's awesome. So I really wish that he would change that about him. And um, you know, so. I really think, like I said, he's got a lot of potential, a lot of skill. But like I said, he's throwing arm punches in there. And he's not throwing with anything with any heat at all. On the other hand, when you're talking about heat and power punches, Jared Kenenia, you know, Jared, that's all he does is throw, you know, powerful shots. But he's also very talented in there as well. He definitely knows how to pick his shots. He definitely knows how to get himself in position. I mean, that Derek Brunson fight was just a massacre, you know. And Jared got hurt in that fight, right? You know, Jared got hurt in that fight. But, man, Cannonier threw those elbows. He definitely has really great game plans when he comes in there. Like, when he fought Anderson Silva, he just kicked Silva's legs out from underneath him. He was very smart. You know, Derek Brunson, he threw the elbows because he knew that Derek Brunson was going to come in and clinch. And he knew he was going get, to get him off the break with those elbows. So, you know, Vittori doesn't really have great leg kicks either, and Cannoneer really does. So, I'm excited to see how Cannoneer can implement his leg kicks, as well as stance switches, and see if we can mix in those power shots. And it's, if you're listening to this, you're kind of thinking, oh, I already know where he's leaning. He's leaning towards Cannoneer. But the problem is, Cannoneer's fucking damn near 40. Okay, and the higher weight classes, you can kind of get away with age, right? Because power makes up for it with the with the less speed and reaction time that you get. The power is still there, but uh, you know, I don't know, man. This sport, you age overnight like fucking bread, and his last fight with Sean Strickland was a close fight, but Sean Strickland 
definitely won that fight. For sure. Sean Strickland was putting the pace on him, putting that jab in his face and whatnot. And Cannoneer was kind of throwing some big shots, but really didn't land much. Right? But I guess the judges gave it to him because he threw big shots and it kind of threw Strickland all over the ring a little bit. But really, it just... I don't understand how Jared Cannoneer won that fight, to be honest. So, really... It boils down to this. It's like, well, Cannoneer's coming off a win. Sure, Vittori's coming off a win, but they both came off of kind of not impressive wins. They're still in the top five. They've got great skill sets and whatnot, but um, at the end of the day, I hate to say this, but I just I just feel like um, Cannoneer's up against the battle with the clock, and Vittori's still young, very young. And we'll, you know... If I have to pick, like the way I'm envisioning this fight in my head, I could see Cannoneer knock him out. As crazy as that sounds with that cinder block ahead of that he's got, you know, that fucking mini refrigerator fire hydrant head that Vittori has. But I, that could happen. I could see it. You know, Vittori does get hit, especially when exchanging. And I do believe Cannoneer is the more slicker striker for sure. But. You know, fighting is definitely a young man's game unless you're Joel Romero or, oh my God, what's his name? Oh my God, uh, Fran- Trinaldo. Francisco Trinaldo, is that his name? Yeah, Trinaldo. That guy doesn't fucking age either. That guy's amazing too. But yeah, you know, and, and, uh, and Glover Teixeira, of course, my hero. Randy Couture. And there's a few, but like I said, out of the hundreds, even thousands of fighters out there. It's definitely a young man's game. So, final prediction for Mr. Yabachaba, yours truly. I think it's I think it's going to go down to Marvin. I think Vittori. I think Vittori gets it done. And I'm going to be a little spicy and say submission because why not? And uh, the boys chimed in. Mr. Willie himself, Willie Walkthroughs himself. Check out the YouTube channel, Willie Walkthroughs. The live streams are on there are super funny. I'm included. Mr. Wizard's included. The Wizard. He thinks Marvin Vittori is going to win by decision. And what do you know? The Wizard himself. Mr. Joey. The Wizard. He thinks Marvin Vittori is going to get it done by decision as well. So we will see what happens. I think it's going to be a pretty interesting fight. And I hate to say this, but it might be a boring one for a main event. It really might be. So we'll, we'll we'll see. I think uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Every fight night's always fun. That's why I'm doing the show because the show is about the most fun fucking sport of all time. Hello. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate making these. I appreciate everybody. Make sure you appreciate some people. All right. Um, so yeah. I'll see you guys soon enough. This guy is driving 55 miles an hour on the interstate. Which I think should be illegal. And if I was a fucking cop, I would definitely pull his ass over and fart in his face. Anyways, see you later. I'll see you in the reaction video. Peace.